What is the EU? Surely such a simple question has an equally simple answer. Yes, it's that thing that the UK's leaving, that has a flag, a parliament, presidents, its own currency, that makes laws that govern trade and crosses a whole continent. But what is it? The short answer is that nobody knows. Why? Because there's no single answer to what is the EU. In this series, we plan to explain the EU in simple terms, and in this video we're going to give you an overview, attempting to answer the question, what is the EU? Quickly though, if you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel. We've only just started the channel recently, and this is our first proper video, so we'd appreciate you hitting the subscribe button down below. Also, if you have any topics you'd like us to cover on this channel, make sure to leave them in the comment section. Before we get to the five core elements of the EU, let's start with something easy. Who's in the EU? The EU is comprised of member states. They are Portugal, Ireland, Spain, France, Italy, Belgium, the Netherlands, Luxembourg, Germany, Poland, Latvia, Lithuania, Estonia, Finland, Sweden, Romania, Bulgaria, Cyprus, Greece, Hungary, Slovakia, the Czech Republic, Austria, Slovenia, Croatia, Malta, Denmark, and depending on when you watch, the United Kingdom, who are set to leave during 2020, following the UK's 2016 EU referendum. While the UK is, for better or worse, leaving the EU, other countries still want to join. There are five candidate countries for EU membership. Serbia, Montenegro, Turkey, Albania, and North Macedonia. There's a whole bunch of other territories and exceptions, so if you want us to run through how they all connect in 2020, like this video and comment down below. Now that's all sorted, let's take a look at the EU itself. The EU has many institutions, the most prominent being the Council, Commission, Parliament, Eurozone, and Court of Justice. The European Council is like a board of directors, made up of leaders of each member state. They meet at regular summits, which are chaired by the Council President, currently Charles Michel. The Council makes key decisions on the overall direction of the EU, including new treaties, new member applications, and institutional reforms. This has enabled it to become an important motor for European integration. They're also responsible for appointments to EU institutions. The Commission President, for example, is nominated by the Council. While the Council sets the agenda, the Commission makes it a reality. At the top of the Commission is a College of Commissioners, with one Commissioner from each member state. The College is headed by a President, currently Ursula von der Leyen. The College acts like a cabinet, with each Commissioner responsible for an area of policy. For example, Phil Hogan of Ireland is the Commissioner for Trade, or Estonia's Kadri Simpson, who's responsible for energy. The Commission has four main responsibilities. Drafting and implementing EU laws, representing wider EU interests, managing EU finances, and representing the EU internationally. The European Parliament is the representative arm of the EU. Its 751 members, or MEPs, are directly elected by member state citizens. While MEPs are members of national parties, like the CDU, Spanish Socialist Party, or the Law and Justice Party, those national parties sit in pan-European political groups. Currently, there are seven groupings, ranging from the far left to the far right. From left to right, they are the European United Left, Nordic Green Left, the Socialists and Democrats, the Greens, European Free Trade Alliance, Renew Europe, the European People's Party, the European Conservatives and Reformists, and the Identity and Democracy grouping. There are also non-aligned members who aren't members of any of these political groupings. Unlike most legislatures, the European Parliament has two seats, one in Brussels and another in Strasbourg. Like other parliaments, the European Parliament has a presiding officer, or president. Currently, that presidency is held by David Sassoli. The Euro is the most tangible example of European integration. If you live in the EU, you most likely are paid in Euros and buy things in Euros. It's used every day by over 300 million Europeans. Driven by a belief that the Euro would remove the barrier to the single market, it was given the go-ahead by the 1992 Maastricht Treaty. It was launched in stages between 1999 and 2000. Germany, Austria, Ireland, Spain, Portugal, Italy, France, the Netherlands, Belgium, Finland, Luxembourg, and Greece. It's also grown to include Slovenia, Malta, Cyprus, Slovakia, Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia. Bulgaria and Croatia are also in the final stages of joining the Euro. And outside of the EU, you'll find Kosovo and Montenegro, who also use the Euro. All other aspiring member states are legally obliged to adopt the Euro as only the UK and Denmark have opt-outs. 
The final institution we're going to take a look at in this video is the European Court of Justice, aka the ECJ. As a supreme legal authority, the ECJ is the final court of appeal for disputes over EU law. If a French court has a question about EU law, the ECJ clarifies it with a preliminary ruling. If a member state, company, individual or EU institution is breaking EU law, then the ECJ resolves those disputes. The ECJ is basically the EU's supreme court. So let's circle back to the beginning. What is the EU? It has a council and a parliament that appoint and approve someone to head something that looks similar to a government. It passes laws and applies those equally across the EU. And those are overseen by something similar to a supreme court. The EU has a flag, a currency and citizenship. But does this mean that the EU is a country? After all, it has many of the same things you'd expect to see in a standard country. Well, no, and it can't do some of the things that other countries can. The EU can't levy taxes, and there's no common budget across its member states. There's no EU treasurer, and its member states are largely still sovereign. It also isn't an international organisation like the UN. The EU has assumed more power over its member states than the UN. For example, the EU legislates for member states. This is why it's hard to say definitely what the EU is, because there hasn't been anything like it before. What the EU is depends on who you're asking. A Eurosceptic will have a very different answer than a Federalist. And that's why the EU is unique, and during this series, we'll be breaking it down so everyone can understand why. If you want to be updated when the rest of this series and our other EU content's released, then be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon.